We are back. Uh, welcome, guys. Welcome back to the Dog Bone Podcast. What episode has it been? 29. 29. Um, we are... I, I thought we would do... We've got a couple. We're actually... Uh, we haven't recorded one for a while. <clears throat> I've got a couple topics that we want to cover. Um, we're not going to do it all in one. Um, I We're going to kind of knock them out one at a time here, and we'll be posting them up as quickly as possible. So bear with us. But in, in my mind, is kind of bouncing around because... I've got just a, a a bunch of stuff on on the plate right now, um, all really good stuff, all kind of really fun projects. Um, some are fun, others are um, exciting. Um, some are kind of wrapping up, some are just starting. But I, I thought what we would do is kind of stick with. Um, we have done how many do we do on Arrow now? Two. two. Do you want to clip that on here? I want to say two. So I think we've done two kind of podcast episodes that we talked about arrow and arrow is um a malinois shepherd mix um i should know exactly how old she is but i don't um she's about i think she's about 19 weeks i think she came here when she's about 15 weeks old um belongs to josh and sarah bomar um bomar bow hunting and they also do some nutrition, Bomar Nutrition, which is, I think, another one of their businesses. They've got a couple different businesses. Um, I don't know them super well. Um, it, the way I really got to know them was um, I didn't know who they were. I, um, it's not my world. Now, the bow hunting part, I kind of did, I should say, um, because I remember hearing the story about a guy that speared a bear, and he was the guy. Um, it, it, that was, I don't know, that was a couple years ago, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, so I knew a little bit um, of backstory, not much of them personally. Um, if you know me at all, you'll know that I would not know them from the fitness world. I would not know them from the nutrition world. Um, uh, that's not my thing at all. But um, I, what, the way we connected with them was Instagram. And I know it sounds weird, but uh, they got this puppy um, and they named her Arrow. And she's just a, she's a really nice little dog. Um, they started an Instagram page. Arrow has way more followers than we do. She's, uh, she's way more popular when it comes to that. But they started an Instagram page for her. And through that Instagram page, somehow I, I had some notifications show up um, that was tagged into it. I saw it. I get that a lot of times where all of a sudden it'll just, you know, you'll be tagged into something. Some stuff I don't understand why I am. Some stuff I totally get why I am. This was, they were interested in, uh, someone, someone recommended them following us, um, the, the, our dog bone hunter pages. And so I thought, yeah, you know, that that's cool. Uh, I would love to see a dog that isn't a retriever, isn't a lab, um, I think that's cool to see. There's a, there's a, we have a follower on Instagram, Cami the Malinois, um, that, that this was, you know, for years now that, that, that it's, it's surprising how many people have Instagram pages. We have Tito the Wonder Pup. We have, um, there's a bunch of them, but, uh, Tito is Tito, the dog that we trained Tito. Um, but a lot of these dogs have these pages and I like seeing dogs that are not Labrador retrievers. I like seeing dogs that are not retrievers, period. Um, there's a, we have a little Brittany. Uh, there's a, I forget, I forget the names of all of them. Um, Rooster or something is one of them that follows us. But anyway, so this, that is how we connected. And so I, I reached, I commented and I just said, man, if I can help out in any way, let me know. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I will. And so, and I do that a lot. Uh, and we, 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 generate a lot of relationships that way well anyway so that's how we connected with them and that it happened to be that they were going to be leaving the country they were they've been in africa for the last month hunting um it wasn't feasible it wasn't the best fit for them to bring the puppy with and they said what what would you say to the idea of bringing her in um, and I said, you know, I'd be interested timing wise. It actually worked for me. Um, we were in between some puppies. Um, and so we brought her in knowing that it was going to be a relatively short window, really excited, uh, with what we were able to do in the last month. You know, she's going home in a couple days. Um, and we, you know, it, prior to doing it, I was really clear to them to, to have them understand 
realistic expectations in a short period of time have to be understood going into it. Because I didn't want, um, and, and it's one of the things, we don't train a lot of dogs for clients. We do, um, we do a limited number. Um, we, we typically, we have dogs for longer periods of time. We don't have time periods on our dogs. Like when we train them for people, there is no limitations. There's no, we don't charge by the month. We don't do anything like that. Um, our waiting list is really long. Um, it's about three years right now um, with clients that have deposits down for dogs. But we're just, we just do it very differently. Um, our dog, the dogs that we train all live in the house with us. Uh, one of the things that I want to make a point of, it may change as we record this podcast. We're, ben and I are in my kitchen right now. Um, I've got our three dogs are laying on their beds right now. The last two arrow ones, arrow was on place behind mm -hmm. us. Um, and she's not right now. She's in her kennel and she's quiet. And the last one we put her in there and she barked quite a bit and then she settled in. Um, w one of the struggles we've had with her has been the kennel and we'll talk about, I'm going to just kind of bullet point some of the stuff that we're progressing with. Well, things that aren't going so well, things that kind of next step things, but, um, we worked her and we've done, been filming it. And so we're posting a lot of that stuff on Facebook, it's going to go on our YouTube. I don't yeah. think it's on YouTube yet. Um, we're, we're going to share these um, sessions with you, um, similar to what we've done in the past with Live with Spry, similar to what we're doing right now with Cody Go Back. Um, I think there's a ton of value in very honest, candid training um, because things don't go well. And I do think that people gain a lot from that. So with her, we have had that happen. Uh, plenty of times and it's and she's done very well with it but we just got done filming one so brought her back in fed her it's a little after nine o'clock uh, so we're a little bit later than normally feeding but within an hour or so of when we usually feed her um, and I put her in the kennel and I have her and I also have a pup that's a month younger they're both in the kennel right now and they haven't made a peep since we came in and so that is a gigantic step from when you look, if you rewind and look back to day one or day two or day three, the first week that dog was here, um, the, the kennel was an absolute nightmare. Um, for the first night, it was bark all night for the most part. I think she tired herself out eventually and fell asleep. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm probably exaggerating a bit, but not much. And, I, and I'm trying to do it. To, to let people understand, like we kenneled her. I thought maybe I should put her on place. She doesn't whine on place. She doesn't bark on place. She creeps a little bit on me. So I gotta be careful with that, especially when I'm focused on facing this way and she's behind us. But when it comes to the kennel, I had her in the kennel last time and she barked and whined and somebody uh, made a comment and said, I really, I know it bothers you and it drives you nuts, but I really thought it was great to hear that dog in the background because I know you're not bullshitting us that that dog does that uh i hear it and i it it makes me feel better because i know my dog does it and i'm trying to figure out what it sounds like how you get through it what type of attention or non no attention do you give to it and so that was just that was real um and so we put her in there again thinking she may bark uh, I, i'm not going to say it this morning when we worked with our other dog she barked in the outside i have a crate in the garage because the baby was sleeping so i put her in the garage when i go outside to work the other dogs and she barked for 45 minutes mm -hmm. and and the difference could be and probably is here in the house i'm still covering it with a blanket um i do think that has a big impact on them it it eliminates the distractions she can't see stuff she can still hear stuff but she can't see it out in the garage i didn't have a i don't have a blanket on that one so she can see out now there's not a lot going on it's my garage but she can see out and i do think that the, just the visual part of her realizing there's stuff out there and i'm in here was more than she could handle and so we do have to incrementally take steps um to getting them getting them there and and that's just that's just where she is right now so um i am very very excited um about the idea of the progress we've made um her heel work has gotten so nice uh, i don't think she healed real well when she came here um, she's responded very well to that she's steadying up nicely we used feeding times to steady her up we showed that a little bit um, i also used feeding times to get her 
uh, settled into the kennel. I've been feeding her in the kennel quite often too. So um, we've used food to excite her about the idea of the kennel and go into the kennel. I showed that in a video. Um, I've, I've weaned off the food. She kennels up pretty naturally right now. Um, you gotta remember, when she first came, it was a wrestling match to get her near the kennel, much less go involuntarily. So that's a huge step. When you look at from day one to where we are right now, three weeks later. Um, day to day, it's really hard to measure uh, progress. Uh, week to week, it becomes a little clearer. Month to month, it becomes even clearer. Year to year, it's, it's you can almost say it's black and white. And the only way you get there is a year's worth of work, a month's worth of work, a week's worth of work. So that's the big takeaway, I think, or one of the big takeaways. Now, with her, um, we've got, we're working on several other things with her. We're working on heel work, right hand turns, left hand turns. She just started left hand turns recently. It's about a week or two after right hand turns. That's just that's just normal schedule. I mean, that it takes that long. Uh, retrieves. She made a few retrieves for us. 100% uh, dependent on our setup. Um, she will. She likes to run off. So I set it up where she didn't have a chance to run off. She didn't have an opportunity to run off. And by God, she brought, would bring it back. And so it all became how you set it up. I, with her, my, my first good spot with retrieving with her was she didn't like the water. She's not crazy about the water. She'll go in it now. Um, we eased introduction to water with her was one thing that we did. Uh, she wouldn't touch the water. I brought her up north the first weekend we had her. She wouldn't touch the water. Fourth of July weekend? No, 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 no. She wouldn't even put her feet in it. Um, I had other dogs swimming. I all, no, she didn't want anything to do with it. By the end of the weekend, she'd get up to about her knees, and that was it. Nice warm water, and I walked in it with her, and you know that was fine. No rush. She didn't get into it the first weekend. That's okay. The second week, nothing. Didn't you know? It's no different. Got up maybe to touch her belly. That was it. She wasn't going to swim. The only exception was she did fall off the dock. Um, certainly did not throw her in. Do not put your dogs in by force. But she slipped, fell off, kind of panicked, startled. We comforted her. And she got up on shore and got out of it, no problem. Now, what put her over the edge was I was pumping out a pond. Uh, we got a pond next door um, on our property and I was pumping it out and I had the dogs over there. I had knee boots on, I was in there with the pump and, my, and Cody, who is a fish, she went in the water and she's just, I couldn't get her out of the water and I had, you know, I let the, do the dogs were off lead at that point. I didn't, f I, I don't let dogs free play a lot. I don't let them free swim a lot. In this situation, I was okay with it. Shallow water, warm water. And she went in and she started swimming. And I think she surprised herself at, man, I'm just so excited and having so much fun. Next thing I know, I turn around and I'm not touching the ground anymore. And from that moment on, um, it was kind of a green light for her. She doesn't love the water. She's not, she's not like Cody. I can't hardly get her out of it. My other dogs are, eh, they'll take it, they'll leave it, they like it, but they're not going to stay in it constantly. Neither is this um, little shepherd dog, um, Arrow. She, she doesn't mind it. Um, I think I could get her to chase a dummy into it if I wanted to. I haven't, but I think I could. Uh, she's not terrified of it. She doesn't. She's not in love with it. But that was an introduction, and it took a couple weeks to get to the point where she literally went in um, and a few different tries. So again, it's another example of things don't happen overnight. Let them happen as they happen. Let it progress as, it, as it's going to. Let things take, take shape um, kind of naturally. I'm not big on forcing things onto dogs. Not big on forcing things into dogs. Not big on forcing dogs into situations. You let it develop when it develops. Um, so some of the stuff she's not quite ready for yet. Some of the stuff she's doing really well with, um, nothing is she done with. And so that's, that is no exception. I don't care if it's arrow Cody, the new puppy that we have, Bella, uh, my older dog, Spry Taylor, Ellie, it doesn't matter. Um, constantly we're working on stuff and constantly we're, we're continuing to move down the road with them. Um, and, and I think enjoying it is what is the difference. Some people, I believe, look at this training process as a real pain in the ass. Like it's just a nag. Uh, it's a, oh, I gotta go do that again. If you go, if, you, if you're feeling that way about it, boy, I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be really hard. Uh, first off, it's gonna be a long, painful road. Um, 
it's gonna be hard to it's gonna be hard to progress because I do think I know for a fact that when I'm in a bad mood, my dogs don't do very well. It may have nothing to do with the dogs. Something else has got me in a mood. And when I go out and work with them and we start, the littlest thing that they do that some days might not bother me that much, all of a sudden it sets me off and I'm just a, I'm a jerk about it. And as soon as that happens, they realize quickly, they read us way better than we can read them. And they very quickly, um, shut down. I, I get dogs that shut down. I get dogs that become a little defiant. You know, they don't all Cody right now is real soft. And if you're watching our Cody go back series on YouTube, um, we started posting some of them on Facebook as well, the full length videos, but they, some of them get a little bit long. So they're all on our YouTube channel under a playlist, but she's extreme. She's on the extreme end, um, of a bit, what I would call sensitive. I don't think arrow sensitive, nothing like Cody. Cody's sensitive to the point where if you put too much pressure on her, she is going to stop. Arrow becomes a bit defiant. Um, it's a difference in her personality. I don't think it's because of her breed. I think she is a different breed. I think, but I have labs that are like her and I have labs that are like Cody and I have labs that are in between. So my training process with Arrow my, my approach, my technique has been no different. I have done absolutely nothing different than what I would normally do with any of my retrievers. And if you brought me a beagle, I'd do the same thing. And if you brought me a springer, I'd do the same thing. I don't care what the breed is. I think training is training. I think cultural impacts make gigantic influence and difference on, on what the dogs, how the dogs turn out. I think she has adjusted very well. Arrow has adjusted very well to our lifestyle. I laughed about it the other day because, um, well, I laughed, it was this morning. Got this new puppy named Bella, and Bella came in, uh, came running, ripping through the living room. She was off lead, you know, and I walked in, and she came running in with me, and she j looked at the couch, and she put her front paws up on it. And I corrected her, no, no, no. And I took her down and she was very sorry. You could just see it in her eyes. She was very sorry. She didn't realize that she wasn't supposed to do that. She would not done it yet. She'd only, she's only been here a couple days. The first day we had Arrow, second day we had Arrow, she, did, she came in through the front door. She ran full tilt, launched herself up onto the couch, over the back of it, and just flew into the kitchen. Like, I mean, super athletic. Like, uh, it looked like a commercial for something. I don't know what, but it was like, it was wow. The dog's flying through the air and it happened in a split second. And red was here, Sierra. And she saw that and she looked at me and her eyes were so big. And she went, that dog could be in the Olympics. And I said, yeah, that we can't have that. And so the next time we came into the living room, I just set it up again. I, I missed it. I didn't expect it. I didn't correct it. I didn't expect it. I thought, what the, I was in shock. We circled around and I think the dog had a lot of fun with it. And I expected the dog to do it again. And we came around the couch and she went to run and I went, ah, no, you don't. And she looked at me and went, oh my God, I have not had the dog jump on the couch since. It didn't take anything more than a firm correction and I meant it. And she, I may have even grabbed, I think I grabbed a hold of her. I got a hold right behind the back of her neck. I got her by the scruff of the neck. And I said, no, 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 you don't. And she looked at me and went, boy, really sorry about this. She has not seen another dog get on furniture around here. She has not seen, she has seen my dogs go on place. She's seen them go in their kennels. She sees them under control. And all of a sudden this, this idea of that's what happens around here has become adapted by her and willingly. Like it, now, does she test me? Absolutely. Every one of my dogs tests me. Um, they all do. And, and I have, that's where I have to stay sharp. It, it, you have to, they'll test you until it becomes so strong that the habit is stronger than the temptation or the distraction. That's the key. And that temptation and that distraction for Arrow um, comes in lots of different ways. One of the things today was she ran off on us and went to chase down my son and his buddy. After they're working with us and uh, they, she, we were training and she saw them and she ran over by them. And I called her back and I blew the whistle and it, I called her back and it didn't work. I blew the whistle and she turned, looked at me and came running. It told me that the whistle over the last three weeks has been 
pr is proven to be stronger than the temptation or distraction to go play with these guys. And those guys did everything right. They didn't praise her. They didn't love her up. They, they just kept walking. And so they, she wasn't getting what she wanted there. She heard me on the other end. She went, I've, I've seen this before. I've heard this before. When I hear this thing, I should run back to him and he'll praise me. And I did. She ran back to me, petted her, loved her up, went on with our session. So it's, it's training we do with, with arrow and we've done with arrow and we've done it in very small incremental ways, specific sessions and lessons that have focused on certain things. The big, and she learned stuff that way. I think the biggest thing is all the little opportunities in between those sessions that we've had, we've taken advantage of most of them or, or all of them that we recognized and we gained something in those moments, one little nibble at a time. And the, the problem with the idea of we don't accomplish it all in the training sessions, we we develop or in, put something into them and then we practice it throughout in between times. So all day long, um, we're taking advantage of or trying to get as many little practice sessions in as possible. And we've been extreme and that, that is the definition of consistency. And that's where I, I always say dogs don't dogs, Training a dog is nothing more than forming a habit, and that habit is formed with the repetition and consistency. It's a mindset. You have to take it on. You have to, you have, to have a plan. You have to have a bit of an understanding. You have to adapt it, adopt it. You have to f f believe in it. You have to r truly execute on it. And that's the thing. You can have the plan, and if you don't execute it, it does you no good. You can... You can have no plan and try to execute stuff all the time, it won't do you much good because you're gonna be all helter skelter. You're gonna be all over the place. Gotta have a little bit of both. Um, it, 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 you know, I, I make it sound mechanical that way. Um, there's a fluidness about it. And that just comes through um, lots, of, lots of experience, I think. Lots of doing it, making mistakes, adjusting, making mistakes and adjusting. It, it is, this is, raising your dogs is no different than so many things that you guys are doing, whether it be work, whether it be family related. Um, there's so many parallels. And I just think that getting into that mindset, you're going to be so much further ahead for it. So um, that's kind of a wrap. That's kind of a, a, a update on where we're at with Arrow. Now we do have a couple days with her yet. Um, tomorrow morning we're going to do a liver drag with her. Uh, we're going to have her do a little tracking. Now um, I may even use the hide. I'll probably use a real hide and some blood trail scent. But we're going to do some real simple stuff. We're going to film it. We'll put it on YouTube and we'll put it on our Facebook and all that stuff. But we're going to do show the introduction parts to it. I think part of the reason why it's three weeks into it or almost four weeks into it is because this stuff is very, I expect her to knock it out of the park. It's pretty easy um, for most dogs. Uh, they have to have some level of focus. And for the last three weeks, that has been a major point that we've pushed on. We've pushed on the idea of getting her focus and getting her to pay attention for a little while. Um, so we'll have to be short and sweet with it, but I've, I feel like we're ready for that. I also feel like we've got a little bit of a, a relationship with the dog now. Um, she knows who I am. She knows who our, who our pack is here at our house and she's developed some respect. And I think that is one of the biggest things that allows me now to start doing some of these other things is I don't have to worry about her disrespecting or not trusting or having these mixed up feelings when I'm asking her to figure out something that should come very naturally to her, which is put your nose on and sm track that smell. And in the end, you're going to realize there'll be something nice for you there. I also, I'm going to have a hide wrapped bumper there. That hide wrapped bumper has been introduced to her in some of our heel work sessions. And we've developed it into a little bit of a early retrieve, a little little non-traditional early retrieve. We got her on a lead, almost treating it like a check cord. Put the put the um, hide wrap bumper in, and I bring her in, and I don't take it from her. I share it with her. Um, I don't allow tug of war with it. I don't allow 
her running off. I don't turn this into a wrestling match. I don't reach for the bumper right away and pull it away. I share it with her. I pet her under her chin. I pet her on her chest. I, I, I get her to understand that this isn't um, bring it in and he'll steal it from me. It isn't keep away. It isn't um, come and catch me with something in my mouth. So before we get to them finding something at the end of a track, which she will probably find that bumper tomorrow. I want her to understand what to do with it. So we've kind of, we've kind of prepped for that. Um, I, some food driven dogs, you might just put food at the end. I might have some kibble there. Cause if the little hide bumper doesn't get her that excited, I might give her some kibble. Cause she does get kind of excited <clears throat> from a food standpoint. She's motivated uh, when it comes to food. So that's the, the things that we're gonna continue on with her. Um, so I, I think that our, our goal with this one was to give you an update on Arrow. <clears throat> Probably gave you more than maybe you wanted to know, but um, that's where we're at. That's where we continue to go. And uh, I think that's gonna, we're going to wrap this one up for that for for on that topic. Um, we've got a couple. Like I said, I've got a couple other topics that we're going to knock out a few podcasts here um, in one sitting. So uh, keep an eye out on our podcast app. I should uh, have started out with this. We did have some hiccups with our podcast app. We we struggled with our host. Um, apparently, there was a, number nineteen and on was was hosted up until about yesterday or the day before. Mm -hmm. um, nothing before that, and I. Think thank a few of you that sent us some messages and said, Hey, I'm trying to look at all these other ones and I can't find them. Just so you know, if that comes up, don't hesitate. You helping us by bringing awareness uh, will allow us to fix it. I think we've got it fixed now. I think if you, if you subscribe to the podcast, which I encourage you to do, um, you'll be able to have access to all the available episodes, which goes back to episode one. Um, that should be fixed remedied. And then the other thing is if you ever run into an issue with that too, our website has a podcast tab that you can always stream it or whatever you want to call it, play it from our podcast as, or from our website as well. So that's available. Um, but as always, I encourage you, if you like these, um, please don't hesitate to leave a review. Um, it, we, we truly appreciate that. It helps us getting information, uh, getting feedback. And I think it helps with growing the awareness of the podcast. I'm not a tech guy, but, um, leaving us reviews, uh, leaving comments, sending me direct messages, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, um, website, whatever's best for you. Uh, Dogbone Hunter at Dogbone Hunter. That's all of our stuff. Our YouTube channel, check out our YouTube channel. There's tons. You think this has information? Check out our YouTube channel. Um, Benny's been doing a really nice job loading tons and tons of stuff onto there. Um, but keep, keep us um, posted if there's stuff that comes up. If you've got questions, fire them away. Uh, thank you so much for your, your support. It means the world to us. We truly appreciate it. Um, keep, keep, uh, keep listening and we will keep plugging away. It's, it's just, it's one of those things that, you know, this getting the feedback from you guys, getting support from you guys just fuels the fire. So I'm excited about it. Uh, we'll keep going. We've got a couple more topics that we're going to knock out here. So thank you again for listening, uh, and, uh, tune in. We got more coming.